Okay, so those of you who know me know that I like to experiment a lot with different techniques and styles. Try to, try to figure out the things that work best for my athletes when I am um, working with different individuals. So one of the things that's always kind of bothered me is pauses at any moment in the hurdling action. So um, as the years have gone on, I've been looking at places where the pauses occur, trying to figure out ways to eliminate them so that hurdling can, can be just one continuous fluid motion as opposed to a run and a jump and a run and a jump, run and hurdle. There's one continuous motion over the hurdle, between the hurdles. So, um, first thing I noticed back in the days was how the lead leg would pause and the old school hurdling action, the hurdlers would do this and kind of lock their knee. Uh, so when, when they would get here, they would lock, and then they would snap down, okay? So by locking the knee, this leg pauses, so the leg in front is pause, okay? Meanwhile, the frail leg will pause because the lead leg pauses. So this leg locks, this leg waits, then whips to the front, okay? So... And watching some hurdlers who are more efficient, looking at what they did well, uh, I think Alan Johnson is a big one for me. Uh, what I noticed was the lead leg didn't lock all the way, it stayed partially bent. Okay, so, when it, so even when it was at full extension, there was still some bend. It wasn't locked all the way. So the part that stayed partially bent, it could just continue to cycle back to the ground. So the lead leg was one continuous motion. Okay. Uh, when the lead leg was continuous, then the trail leg could be continuous too. Okay. So a lot of old school hurdlers and coaches, I guess, will teach um, that the trail leg should lag, should pause, and then whip to the front. Okay. Uh, but what I noticed, especially in watching Lee Jang, is that both legs get in the air immediately and get into that hurdler position very quickly off the ground. So when the lead leg cycles, the trail leg is not waiting back here anymore. Instead, it's rising up. Okay? So you have one leg cycling and the other leg cycling right behind it. So both legs are in continuous motion with no pauses. Okay? Most of the best hunters today have that aspect to their technique. The waist down, everything's moving, everything's moving. Okay? So, next step, the lead arm. What I noticed was a lot of old school hurdlers were kind of kicking out with the lead leg, and as the lead leg paused, the lead arm paused with it, like this. Mm. And they come back down. Okay, so you have two motions. One, two, as opposed to one fluid motion. Alright? So, um, and looking at that, it's kind of like, okay, let's make the lead arm do what we want the lead leg to do. So we want the lead leg to continue to cycle and not lock at, at full extension, then the arm shouldn't lock either. Okay, so, so uh, and looking at Lu Zhang, so he, he would do something like this, where he would, instead of being real long with it, he would bring, he would bring his, with the lead arm. He would bring the arm, uh, the thumb, right to his chin or his forehead and, and punch it straight back down. Boom, boom. Okay, like that. Uh, however, the problem that I saw with that is that his arm ended up coming, coming back too far when he landed and it would throw his shoulder offline a little bit. Okay, so let's have, this is what I was saying, let's have that arm do exactly the lead leg does. The lead leg is doing this, rising with the knee, extending but not, like, but not locking, and then cycling back down. Let's have that lead arm drive up stand and not lock, and then cycle back down so that it looks like this. So together, it looks like this. Okay? One continuous motion. So when you get here with the lead arm, instead of pushing down, you kind of, you kind of cycle down, and then back to the back pocket. Boom! Okay? So lead leg and lead arm are both cycling. Therefore, trail leg can cycle because the lead arm kind of gives it the room, it gives it the cue to pull up. So you have, 
boom, boom. Okay? Now the problem that still existed, right, was that the trail line would talk. Okay? The trail line would get here, get in that back pocket, and on the way down, punch back up. Okay? But there was a pause here before it punched back up. Okay? So it's like, how do we fix that? How do we make it that early is as fluid as water going over a rock? Uh, how do we make it one continuous, seamless motion from starting line to finish line? No pauses at any time in the action throughout the entire race. How do we do that? Okay. So I happen to think back to a teammate I might have had in high school who had a funny running style where his arms would kind of go out like this. So they're going up and down, he would kind of push out. Right. And what I noticed was two things. Even though it looked weird and everybody laughed at it, including me. <laughs> but what I noticed was two things. Well, one, he was beating people. He was only a sophomore. He was beating seniors. And two, he seemed to run taller than everybody else. So it was kind of like when he pushed himself forward like that, it kind of got him up on the balls of his feet better. Okay? He was able to bounce better than a lot of other sprinters. Well, he was sprinting with him everywhere. Um, so when I was thinking about this trail line, I'm trying to get rid of the pause, that one of the mine came to mind. I was like, I wonder if we do a modified version of that. Um, and then what I realized was, uh, to get rid of the pause in the trail arm, you have to kind of change you know, the arms, the arm carriage completely in every stride, not just over the hurdle. Okay? So in normal running motion, which is what everybody in the world does, uh, the arms go up and down. Okay? Boom, 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 boom. Okay? Meanwhile, okay, in keeping in, in line with the thing of everything being synchronized, the legs being synchronized with the, with the arm. Uh, meanwhile, the legs did not go up and down. They went up, down, and back. So a normal sprint stride would be something like this, where the back leg would come up. Let me use this hurdle by the full man. Uh, back leg will come up, and then once you got your, your full knee height, you will come down, keeping the ankle flexed, and then pull back. So your normal front side mechanics uh, sprinting stride consists of three parts, if you will. Up, down, back. So when you take out the pauses, it's one motion. It's a continuous cycle. When you get to the bottom, you come straight back up. Right? So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, continuous cycle. So you see the problem uh, from a synchronicity perspective. Your arms have a one, two, and your legs have a one, two, three. They're not in sync. Okay, so we've got to sync them up. The arms got to go one, two, three, like the legs go one, two, three. The arms got to cycle like the leg cycle, okay? So, with this arm motion, what I call cycle arm, for obvious reasons, um, we'll start back here, uh, on the back pocket, just like we're starting on the ground, okay? Uh, you come up, okay, from the back pocket, you come up, you kind of curl down, and then pull back, okay? And once you get back here, you go straight back up, down and back. Okay, so from here you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so you put that with the leg. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now usually when you sprint, you go up and down. There's two pauses at the back and at the top. At the bottom and at the top. When you get here, there's a pause. When you get here, there's a pause, and you pull back down. Okay? So, how do we get rid of both the pauses at the bottom and at the top? By cycling. When you get here, you don't pause and punch. You cycle back here, and then open, and then pull under. Okay? So, it's the uh, uh, uh. So, if you're looking at it, I'm ne my arm never, never stops moving. Okay? You put that with the leg, it never stops moving. Okay? So, uh, it looks more, uh, looks kind of funny looking, but well, when you do it, uh, it doesn't really feel that funny looking, uh, unless you can hang it. So, so this is how the arms will look. 
It looks a little bit frenzy, put it with the legs. Okay, and everything's going. So the emphasis is more on the down. And normal sprinting emphasis is a lot on the up, thrust. With this, the emphasis is more on the down. So when you get here, you want to kind of pull down. You see how my hand is kind of curling? So I get here at the top one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? And so now that neither arm is pausing when I'm running, neither arm should pause when I hurt him. Feel me? Okay. So here's what the, this would be my trail arm. Okay. This is what trail arm would do now. Okay. So usually the, the, tra the trail arm would do this. So we get here, and we put it on the back pocket, and we kind of hold it there, and then punch it up. Okay. Now, when we, when we get to the back pocket, we cycle it, and cycle it back down. Okay, so basically, what you have in effect is two lead arms. Because earlier, you know, I was talking only about the lead leg and the lead arm being synchronized. You have this. So the lead arm is cycling. The lead arm is not pausing. The lead leg is not pausing. Okay? So now, if the trail arm is doing the same thing as the lead arm, it's not going to pause either. So instead of, instead of pausing back here, it's going to keep moving back here. So basically you have lead arm, boom, as the lead leg lands, trail arm, boom, as the trail arm lands, as the trail leg lands. And so both both leg arms have it uh, function in the exact same way. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay? So you have land on the ground, first step. Okay? Over the hurdle. Boom, boom. Okay. So that way. There's no pause in the action at all, right? When I was experimenting with this with one of my athletes last, uh, uh, last summer, I guess it was, two summers, not the summer that's just now ending, but about a year ago, um, what we figured out is that coming out the blocks for the first couple of strides, you got to keep it just one, two, one, two with the arm. But by the fourth step, or the fifth step, I think it was, you're able to get in the cycle mode and take that cycle mode for the rest of the race. I want to show you with my limited old man abilities is what the cycle arms looks like over the hurdle. Uh, got a little practice hurdle here set up at 30 inches so I don't hurt myself. Uh, but hopefully I can just kind of give you a feel for what it looks like uh, in terms of no pauses in the action. Okay, so what happens is, as you may have seen on that demonstration, it's going to be a slowdown, but not a pause. I didn't explain that before, let me explain it now. Um, I kind of think of a hurdle as a hill, okay? So when you're going up the hill, you're going to slow down because you're going up a hill, not because you're not trying, not because you're, not, not because you're tired or you're slower, but because the hill's there. So you're going to slow down, like think about a roller coaster perhaps. You slow down, and then once you reach that peak, you start coming back down, Zoom, you speed down, okay? So, over the hurdle, now, now here's the deal. The arms aren't pausing now because they're both cycling, okay? But if the arms keep cycling as fast as they are on the ground, and they keep, if they keep cycling that fast over the hurdle, what's going to happen? The time is going to be off. The arms are ready to descend, and the legs are still in the air. So you're going to throw yourself off and be like, ooh, and land all funny, okay? And... In my experience with it, that's happened with me when I've tried to do this, do this on my own. And also some of my athletes, I always tell them uh, when they're working on it, is you're doing things right, but your timing's off. Okay, so the key is over the hurdle, the arms have to slow down. The legs have something to go over, the arms don't. The arms have to slow down a little bit for the legs. So slow down, but you're not stopping, okay? Nothing's stopping. You slow down, and then it's downhill, you speed it back up. So you're going up a hill and back down a hill. And so on the way down, because you're speeding it back up, you creates a lot of velocity, a lot of speed coming off the hurdle. Okay? So you end up accelerating off the hurdle without even trying to. Because everything is, is going forward. All of your upper body weight is in front of your feet. And so you almost fall forward, but you catch yourself as you get more acclimated to it. Let me try another way.
All right, so I'm at, I'm at a point in my coaching life right now where I'm more English teacher than track coach. So school where I'm at doesn't really have a big team. So I got ideas I haven't used because I was trying to use them all with my athletes and then, you know, things just didn't work out. So if you have an interest in learning more about this or if this seems like something that you think could work, uh, then hit me up uh, at my website or uh, on my YouTube page or what have you and ask for questions that you may have. So obviously this is not something for everybody. It's an idea. Right now it's still an idea. It's not something that's been put out there in the race yet. Uh, I have seen it work in practice, and I have seen it work for non-hurdlers. I had a quarter mile girl with my 63 down to 59 in one season. Uh, she, she already kind of swam with her arms, so I just kind of modified it to a cycle arm style, and it really helped her. Key of it is the abs, the core has to stay strong. If you sink in and your cycle arm, you just, you, it's not going to work. you got to be real, real tight in your core. But if you have any questions, hit me up and I'll try to make more videos on this if there's enough interest. If not, I'll just do my own thing like I always do. All right, peace.